It is 10 minutes after 7 o'clock and a warm welcome back. Now, his works include I Salute You, If I Could Sing, To the Bitter End, Approaches to Poetry Writing, The Present is a Dangerous Place to Live, When the Clouds Clear and Heart Prints. Yo, that's a poet laureate, Kiero Peso Khosizile, who died after a short illness on Wednesday. And most of us know the professional side of Brawili. But who was he at home? And to shed more light on this, we've invited his nephews, the Ruto Limuachi and uh, Karabo Morule. Gents, a very good morning and welcome. Good morning, good morning. thank you very much. Right, so I'm going to start with you, Karabo. Apart from the poet laureate, uh, the creative, the literary giant, just who was Brawili? Uh, maybe it will be appropriate to explain how we got to beat Brawili. Uh, because we grew up not knowing him. Uh, uh, and not knowing that he, we have an uncle called Brawili. Mm. Uh, I, I guess it was the way of protecting us as the family and uh, protecting him because they were already in exile. Okay. Uh, we met him in 1986 in a border in Botswana. Uh, I remember we all in the back of the Paki and with our grandfather crossing over two borders crossing the borders for the first time and crossing into Botswana and meeting this huge family and this short man beard and this is your uncle mm -hmm. and our mothers were crying and we were like who is this man and uh, from there on it was actually an interesting thing because now we started visiting Khaburoni to go and see him mm -hmm. and the family but it was short-lived because uh, if you remember, in 1986, that's when uh, the apartheid government bombed the house in Botswana. So their life were, uh, were a bit uh, in danger. So they left for Zimbabwe, and we never saw him again until he came back. Mm. So basically, that's uh, how we, we got to meet him. And when he came back, he was just the uncle who actually wanted to... Uh, cover up all the years that he lost. Right. Uh, so basically, he... He, he did all his best to try and be with the family and try to know who is who and uh, connect with the family. Right, right. Yeah. Now, Tori, tell us how you managed to keep your relationship to Brawili as a secret under the apartheid regime. That, is, that must have been so hard. Um, actually, it's, it's interesting because it's actually, growing up in Butatswana, um, there wasn't a lot told to us about what was really going on in the country politically. Mm. So this story kind of ushered in a way for our parents to actually relay to us exactly what was going on. I mean, um, having to explain to, you know, a seven-year-old what exile means and, mm. you know, what the struggle is. So that's kind of where my education about the struggle came from. Uh, yeah. Just in, uh, us being told, okay, this is Malome, this is why he's been away. Um, you know, he was in exile. This is what exile means. This is what's really going on in the country politically. And, and around those times, we had to keep him a secret. Mm -hmm. So it was also kind of interesting to go out and play with the other kids and pretend everything is okay. But, you know, when you're alone in a corner, you think, wow, so this is really what's going on. And what's happening here is not right. But things are but being... being a kid yeah. at the time, you know kids, they, you can't really rely on them to keep secrets. How do you manage <laughs> to do that? Uh, well, we, have, we had a very strict grandfather. Okay. Uh, Brawili's father. You know, uh -huh. uh, so, yeah, if he told you to do something, you did it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know. And what's the fondest memory of him? Uh, listen, I... Yes, I've got uh, lots and lots of memories of Brawili. I know, we'd need um, the whole day, actually. Yeah, we'd need the whole day. Uh, mm. What was interesting is when Brawili uh, was still in the States and coming in and out of the country, uh, he, would, he would ask me to drive him to Cape Town instead of flying. And I never used to understand why would this man want to drive to Cape Town. It's mm. far. I mean, you are coming from Mafeking and you drive, it's, it's 1,400 kilos or 1,000 plus. Mm. Then you'll ask yourself, why would this man... But later, it made sense that this man was trying to actually spend time with you. But okay. uh, in that trip, he will tell you stories and stories and stories and stories of days. So my, my memory with him is my trips with him to Cape Town. Uh, actually, and to other places, because when he's in the country, he'll be asked to come and do a uh, workshop, po uh, poetry workshop or read. He will ask me to drive with him. So I, I did spend a lot of time with him on the road, and he will tell stories and stories. 
And uh, what are some of the uh, star qualities or traits that made him stand out that uh, the South African nation probably don't know about? Um, his, his humility, uh -huh. you know, over and above everything. He, I mean, he, he, you know, he was a stately figure, mm. but anyone who's met him will tell you the first thing they tell you about is his humility, his smile, his warmness, uh -huh. um, his, his love for developing the youth. He, he loved young people, uh, creative young people. And he inspired a lot of that in us. You know, uh, we, we are a whole family of artists and, and you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. writers and teachers. And he, he was both. And I was inspired a lot by him uh, to do what I do today. I'm an artist and a teacher. And that's exactly what he was. Uh -huh. you know? And so he, he, he had ways to inspire you without instructing you, you know. Just his manner was, was captivating and, and, you know, you couldn't help but be just impressionable towards him, yeah. yeah. Karab, Todi just said that, uh, you know, you come from a family of, uh, of creatives, basically. So I'm going to put your head on the block for a second. I'll, I'll ask you to, you know, to come up with a piece or a poem in memory of him. Oh, okay. Um, Homo ya raka kodi tampani inge palete le koko la kampi li putehile ba na ba moshana ba ba echa pakai nele matela atata ya ta ko kangwa ki kura pete kosi kile soto kolo saka ta kola di mekak maloberi le kilo kosi bisoni kafe ta kanga la karibu maloma amoto ba fuga pele na le malume ra eta eta na ochapa tuuka chapa tuana tuana le tuu tia tuana malasa king aloti tipa kalo talema o ke pofu homo ya ntle ya di na mati di ntle mo chana yano sa juu inge ba si manya na juu inge ba ke ke di batana le ska mmotsa bojala o tswa makgoweng le mmotsa mafoko a kwa tswa nga kwa yang ga itsi no nyane ya lla mo dipuentsa le bejane ya re khaoganya ndi makore di kopane go mentsi le khunana di alwa e ri le motshega ro mogolo wa sethoboloko e ntso ya lape e khunana ya sala e ja marota mma ke tlhlole pizza e ya khakhatha kana puo ya khurisa e re ke go fa wa tlarela ka matsogo a mabedi seng ka letsogo le lenosi ka ka ntla gore ha wa tlarela ka letsogo le lenosi ngwana ko yena o me khabaru le khudu ro bala ka khotso na mani ya phofu oh brawili is beaming with pride wherever he is thanks guys for for sharing with us Thank, Thank you so coming through. Thank you. That is our poet laureate, uh, Kiro Pizzo, nephews, Lero Todi, Moachi, and uh, Karaba Morule. Well, Josetile, who is one of the most influential and exceptional poets South Africa has ever produced, died on Wednesday. He was South Africa's first national poet laureate and a recipient of the National Order of Ikamanga for his contribution to the field of literature.